Good afternoon from the Universal Orlando parking garage. We are headed in today because we haven't had a chance to look at the preparations for Mardi Gras yet. Mm -hmm. Mardi Gras starts at the end of the week. We haven't seen anything. <laughs> so I'm excited to go inside and have a look at that. There's also a secret menu item at Voodoo Donuts that we might try today. Mm -hmm. Who knows? We've got about two hours before the park closes at Universal and three hours before the park closes at Island. We'll see how it works out. We'll see how much we can get in in this short amount of time. Let's head inside. We should also mention it's cold today <laughs> and it's going to be even colder tomorrow. And I say cold with, you know, a grain of salt. It's 56 degrees outside and windy, which is extremely cold for us. That's why we're all bundled up. All right, we are in City Walk now, and I wanted to mention that we are using the G7X because it's so windy today, and this camera does pretty good in the wind. Oh, it's cold. Just having a look at what we think will be the Universal Studios store. It's coming right along. Holy cow, they pushed this wall way out. How are we supposed to get around in here? Oh, they added some architectural elements to the outside of what we think will be the Universal Studios store. I like these things. Well, they started doing some stucco work too. All right, first stop, Universal Studios, Florida. Head in and have a look at some of the Mardi Gras preparations. Which Mardi Gras starts on the 6th. Very exciting. So a lot of food is going to be there. Yeah, and we also get to see some of the floats. That'll be cool. Not today. No, no, no. For, on the 6th, for Mardi Gras starts. Yeah. Well, it looks pretty nice. Like, there's not a lot of people here right now. Park's closing in two hours, and it's cold. So there you go. That's what you got to do. Come when the park's closing and it's cold. Just a kitty white Hello Kitty walking through the streets. She's just finishing up with a, with one of her character interactions. What we got 40 minutes for Despicable Me, Minion Mayhem. Not too bad. Heading into Music Plaza. Normally during Mardi Gras, they have music groups that come out here and play. Not this year. This year, it's all about the food. You can see we've got shipping container themed food locations here. We don't know what's going to be sold at any of these. We know what the menu is, and we'll put a link to that in the description down below. We just don't know what specifically is sold here. I know what's sold in this one. Oh yeah, Bloody Marys. <laughs> I do like the decorations up on the stage, though. Looks nice. I wonder if they'll do anything up on the stage. Maybe. They might have, like, bead throwers up there. Because we, we still don't know how they're going to be handing out beads, but we do know that they're going to be handing out beads. Did they say that? Yeah. Oh, okay. We, uh, we went to the Mardi Gras celebration at Bush Gardens. Mm -hmm. It was just kind of like an area where some characters stood and were like, here's some beads. I'll link that video down below so you can check it out. But yeah, I think it'll probably be maybe similar to that. Maybe. Yep. Bloody Mary being backed by a, an ad for the mayor, Mr. Mayor. And then we got some more shipping containers over here. I like the style of the boots. Yeah, it's look, nice. They look really cool. And I have a feeling they'll probably put more tables out here during the event. Yeah, there's enough room for it. Yeah. There's also a food truck over here that's still open, and I think this is still... Uh, what was that before from Christmas? It was Arepas. So they'll still have those. I don't know if they'll change it for Mardi Gras. Maybe. You never know. Yeah. Got some more tents over here. Another food truck off in the distance over there. Oh, it's windy today. The dividers between the Coke Freestyle machines? Yeah. Maybe. Makes sense though, right? Last year there was a bar underneath this little area right here. The extended queue for Transformers. And there's no bar there currently, but they have moved the extended queue out into the street for Transformers over here rather than routing it over here. So maybe, unless there's just a long line for Transformers, which is very possible. We have another shipping container over here. And the Mardi Gras Tribute Store, Royal Street Jazz Preservation Hall. This is cool. I like this. I can't wait to go inside and see what it's like inside. We know that there's three rooms. One is a hopping jazz parlor straight out of the 1920s, a flower-filled nautical cemetery, and a waterfront warehouse where all manner of smugglers, treasures, and trinkets are stashed. Sounds very exciting. I can't wait. Did you also see there's like some cool posters out front? I haven't seen this yet. This I think was just put up last night. Special guest Hot Lips Daily. I like that. Tiny Ivory and the Tiny Ivory Quartet. I want a cool jazz name. Oh, I like how they like drew on this one. I know. It's Mr. Fancy Pants. Ah, himself in person. <laughs> Who else? 
Budmo Jiglish. I like these names. Yeah, this is awesome. The Hooten and Hollers. Another thing that happens during other festivals is that they change out the window displays here at Macy's. I think these are just regular old Macy's dresses on display in the window right now. So the last time that we were here, the mummy was down for maintenance and it is back open now. And we've heard that they've changed up some stuff. Maybe some projections are a little bit brighter and nicer. We haven't been on it and I don't think we're going to be on it anytime soon. What does the weight look like? Uh, right now it is a 25 minute wait. It's not, not too bad. Not too bad, yeah. I like this. It's just a tent, but they're like, we need to spruce it up a little bit. Put like a put like a brick wall in front of it. <laughs> Brilliant. As we've made it into San Francisco, Jen's gonna check inside the candy factory to see if they're doing anything for Mardi Gras. But I wanted to show you all the shark, Bruce. There's a photo op back here for Jaws, and they have taken it down. I think they're doing some refurbishment to it. I have to admit though, being here without the shark. This is a very large structure to hold this shark and it makes it feel like the shark is much bigger. Because like when you're here, you're only just down here at the head of the shark. You're like, yeah, it's not that big. But now looking at it, that's very tall. It's like a 20 foot shark. Wow. So I just went into the San Francisco candy factory because I thought maybe they would have some Mardi Gras treats and they will, but they're not available until Saturday. So they're in the back right now. And she said, let me see if I can sell you some. They wouldn't let her. Oh. So I don't know what it is. She couldn't tell me what it was, but we'll check it out um, when Mardi Gras is actually happening. We got some more food booths. I keep calling these food booths, but they could be drink booths as well. Another tent with just a facade in front of it. I really like this idea. It's smart. So I have a feeling that they probably had to move their budget around because they don't have any bands. Right. They're not doing the parade. There's going to be less performers, I imagine. So they probably could jazz up their booths a little bit more this year. Okay. That's just what I'm thinking. I don't know. And Santana. Oh, back here kind of behind Lombards, they set up some string lights back here and another booth. This one definitely will be a food booth because it's got the heat lamps and everything. So they did release the menus already and I'll link that down below where they talked about different food items that they'll be having. Everything looks really good. Yeah. I'm like super excited to try all the food. Just made it into the London waterfront and it looks like the jacket potato stand is open. And this is pretty uncommon because it's a Monday. Oh yeah. So I was like trying to find the jacket potato stand being open and it was only open on weekends. But today it's open on a Monday and we'll put a link to the video in the description down below where we tried this jacket potato. It was okay. When we did our five things we like to do in Diagon Alley video, I entered in kind of over here, which is the main entrance, but there are other entrances. Like we're just going in over here to head in and it's not, you're not heading into the main area. So it's not as good of a reveal, but you are heading into Diagon Alley through here. There we are. So because it's cold, we're going to try to get some hot butterbeer here at the Hopping Pot. So hot butterbeer is a seasonal item, so it's not on the menu. And we are not 100% sure if it's actually available here. We'll find out. Celestina is wearing her wintertime getup, as well as the Banshees. They've got little scarves on. And the last time that we watched them, were they wearing masks? I don't know if they were. So here it is. This is our hot butter beer, and this is, you know, it's butter beer. It's just warm. It smells so sweet. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna... So this was $7.99. It's really hot. Oh no, be careful. <laughs> wow, okay. It's, um, it's just super duper sweet. It tastes nice though. Does it's it? It's very creamy because the, the, the foam on top, it's the same thing that they put on the cold butter beer. Yeah. Um, so it's it's just got that nice creamy flavor, which goes really nicely with like the, the hot butter beer. I wish that you could play around with the different things that you could get. Like I'd love to get that cream on top of a coffee, oh, yeah. but you're not allowed to. Oh yeah, but that would be really nice. Right? I think that if we mix it all together, it might be even better. Okay. So another thing that we got at the hopping pot was some beef pasties. These were $10. Okay, if I had known that those were $10, I don't think I would have ordered them. And that's the thing is there's no prices anywhere. I know, that's how they get you. But they, uh, they the picture, they had like a little, a little uh, what do you call it, like a model. Like a mad cat almost. Yeah, they were a lot bigger than these. Right. So I, I, got, I got tricked. <laughs> so these taste basically like 
a healthier empanada because they're not okay. fried, they're baked. And they're super flaky. They actually they they actually taste really nice. Okay. Yeah. I don't maybe I would pay ten dollars for Oh no. <laughs> they taste really good. That tastes like hot melted ice cream. It's honestly the, the topping on it is so nice. I do wish that it was chocolate though. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like it, it's very sweet. And you said it was thick, but I think once you get down to it past like the topping, it's a little bit watery. Oh no, I just meant the topping is thick. Like the foam, the the what do you call that? The foam? Yeah, yeah the foam. I think that the last time that we tried this, I didn't like it. But I feel like I kinda like it now, but I wouldn't be able to drink an entire thing of it. No, I do like it's a little so like, rich. espresso shot of it. Yeah. It's super, super rich. I would also like to do this as a shot, like espresso shot, with the foam on top of like a whipped milk. So like a cappuccino, like a cappuccino but like a, a butterbeer cappuccino. Butter beer cappuccino? Yeah, that sounds really good. Starbucks. <laughs> Oh, you like didn't nothing in there. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's very like homey flavor. Yeah, it kind of reminded me of almost like a pot roast flavor. I don't know. I liked it. I wish they were a little bit bigger, or you got more for the yeah. price. But I, I did like the taste. It's got vegetables and stuff in there too, which is nice. Yeah, mm. that makes it healthy. <laughs> I think once you get down closer to the bottom and like all of the foam is mixed in with the hot butter beer, that's when it tastes the best. This little buddy loved the beef pasty, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Are you eating your olives? See, I love olives. And we have the uh, the wind and rain cover on, just so he's a little bit warmer in there. See, you're a secret fan of the hot butter beer, I think. You acted like you didn't like it, and then you had to drink the whole thing. You know the rest? What? <laughs> <laughs> you love it. It was pretty good. Fun fact, I don't know if we showed this, but there is 12 Grimwald Place, and if you look up in the window, Creature peeks out. Oh, that was like perfect timing. I know. Wow. Oh, I had to, I forgot to hit record. Oh, really? No, I'm just kidding. Oh. <laughs> so here's the question. We're back here by Fear Factor, which is closed, but are these going to be little tables that you can use? Or is that, oh. you know, it's like, it matches the theming. They're this really is cute. cool. It yeah, it's like pallet wood. Keys. Oh yeah. Right? We just met some of you guys who are actually on your way to the keys. I think that's why I have keys on the brain now. Yeah. But that's what it looks like to me. I like it. It's another tent with a facade. What do you think the little flags on the top of the tent are for? Um, maybe that tells you if it's beverage or, or food. That would be smart. I don't think that's what's going on. <laughs> that's, I don't know. So we were um, walking over towards the Simpsons area, towards Springfield, and we did this video. We already talked about it, but we did this, like, our five favorite things to do in the Wizarding World. And I was thinking, should our next five favorite things be in Springfield? Yeah, I think we should. I feel like there's not a whole lot to do in Springfield, but it's such a cool place. Right? Yeah, we'll do our top five carnival games at, in Springfield. <laughs> I think there's only five of them. There might be six. <laughs> but yeah, let us know. Is that something we should do? Leave a comment. Let us know if that's what you want. Or if there's another land in Universal or Disney that you'd oh, like yeah. to see our five favorite things in. Over here by Men in Black, I did want to point out that the tent that's normally temporary for Halloween Horror Nights is still up from the non-existent Halloween Horror Nights of last year. So I think they will probably use it again. And they probably already built the house and they're just leaving in there for storage until this year. Hopefully. We made it into Springfield. I don't see anything for Mardi Gras in Springfield, and I don't think there will be, just because this is specifically Springfield, just like there wouldn't be Mardi Gras stuff inside of Diagon Alley. Makes sense. I feel like this is something that we've shown in the video before, but they just did some upgrades to the DeLorean here. So now they put in the Almanac, they've added sounds to it, and they put some lights inside. So like the flux capacitor is fluxing, we got these green lights back here. And I think they spruced up some of the paint around these vents back here. I think this was all silver before, or the, the black paint had faded away and they just redid it. Also, I feel like this wasn't a movie car, but this was a movie train. Like I think oh, yeah, it's, it's making noises. 
From what I can remember from the mythology of Universal Orlando, this wasn't a movie car, but that was a screen used train. Like this train was used in Back to the Future 3. Also, this doesn't have anything to do with Universal, but also one time we went to a DeLorean dealership where they just sold DeLoreans. Yeah, we might buy one. No. Oh no? No, we're not doing that? Oh. No, because while we were there, the DeLorean broke down. Remember that guy? There was one guy that swapped out his DeLorean little engine for like a Chevy big block engine, and that's the one he blew out his transmission. It was like he was pushing it back to the dealership. Yeah, he and did then... a burnout in the middle of the road and he dropped his transmission. Oh. <laughs> like... Also, we were in California, we were visiting our friend Adam, and we went to the Twin Pines Mall. Oh yeah. We'll show, I'll see if I can link that video too down below. Yes. But it was pretty cool. Or was it the Lone Pine Mall? I can't remember. I think it was, it, I think it, it was Twin Pines. It was both. Oh, was it? Depending on when during the movie you're watching. No, but what was it called? Like in real. In oh, it wasn't called that. It was called like just it's something mall. Oh, was it? Yeah. <laughs> Marilyn and her diamond doll. I think they're called the diamond dolls. Oh, did you see? She's wearing a mask. Oh, Marilyn's wearing a mask right now. Normally she's not wearing a mask. I wonder if that's just like to travel back to their green room. Maybe. Well, they're headed to the stage right now. So we'll look at, this is another booth right here. Uh -huh. We're in kids zone. Let's head over to where they perform. We'll see if she's wearing her mask on the stage. Okay. It's interesting. Well, normally she doesn't. Well, also normally Celestino wasn't wearing a mask. Yeah. So maybe they've changed the rules a little bit here and there. Maybe they have. Let's find out. So yeah, another, I like the, the, the look of this one. It, it reminds me of Shrek. <laughs> oh yeah, that's just because they're playing Smash Mouth over there right now. <laughs> is that what it is? Yeah, because it reminds me of the Tam O'Shantner out in California. Oh, it does. Yeah. yeah. So I, I went to the crepe stand because I was curious if they were going to have something special for Mardi Gras, and they will. They'll have a creme brulee crepe. Yeah. So that will be available on Saturday when Mardi Gras starts. And right now they have like a stuffing and turkey one. Yeah, it's their seasonal one right now. Then it'll transition over to the Mardi Gras one. It's very exciting. I can't wait to try that. Should be good. All right, let's see. Let's see what Marilyn... Oh, they all took their masks off. Okay. Interesting. We are just about to get rehearsal for Marilyn's newest. So it makes sense now as to why they didn't have their masks on because they're lip syncing. Look, there's Homer. Hi, Homer. All right, Jen, we've seen all of the stuff for Mardi Gras that we could see here at Universal Studios. It's very cold. It is very cold. I think we're probably going to head home and get warm. Yeah, we're going to stop off and grab the donut really quick, the secret donut. But I don't think we're going to go over to Islands to see the Velocicoaster. Uh, we'll, we'll do it another do it. day. We'll do it on our next trip. We're going to come back for sure. But I also wanted to ask you, what are you most excited for for the food for Mardi Gras? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. I don't know. I'll have to look back over the menus. What are you most excited for? I think... I'll have to look back over the menu. <laughs> <laughs> so we real quick came into the Hello Kitty store. A lot of really interesting stuff in here. A lot of Marvel stuff, Punisher stuff, uh, Loki, Karopi, Spongebob, it's Frankenstein and Bride of Frankenstein. Those are pretty fun. Right? I kind of like those. So some of these are lounge fly, but some of these aren't. Oh. Like take for instance, the Minion stuff is not lounge fly. Oh, okay. Oh, a little Hello Kitty waste pack. In this area, I don't know what this is like the Betty Boop section or in between the two. They've got some jewelry that's been inspired by the stars. Like you can see this ring was inspired by one that Rihanna wore. And this one was inspired by one that Ariana Grande wore. And then Emma Stone wore a necklace similar to this one. These are kind of fun though, because look, these are like the royal... You can have like Meghan Markle's engagement ring. Oh. Or you can have Kate Middleton's engagement ring, which was actually Princess Diana's engagement ring. Really? Yeah, these are really interesting. I did not know that. Yeah, and then you Kate can Kate Middleton's do, earrings? Yeah, like her wedding earrings. And then Pippa, her wedding stuff too. My goodness. Huh, I don't know. You well, this be, is interesting. You can look just like a royal for 54 bucks. This is, there's like a bunch of different ones too. I've never like looked at these before. This is so interesting. Yeah, it's really neat. Yeah, oh, what's Lady Gaga's? Where's Lady, oh, her ring. She's married to the music though. <laughs> they even have guys stuff. You could wear the same necklace as Ryan Gosling or The Rock's ring. I think 
it's his wedding ring. And yeah, then look. Bradley Cooper's wedding ring? Timothy Chalamet's ring? Not his wedding ring though, right? No, it's on his pointer finger. Wow. For $24, you can look like Timothy Chalamet. Get out of here, tiny horse. <laughs> All right, one last stop. We're gonna head into the Universal Studios store. I know that they have Mardi Gras themed masks, but I wonder if they have anything else. We got some Mardi Gras themed masks. And then we also have some other new masks down here. You've got Blue with her mouth open and then just another raptor with their mouth closed. Very interesting. Also, we did hear a rumor that there was going to be an annual pass holder preview for the Tribute Store on Friday, maybe? I know that team members were able to sign up for the preview on Friday, but I think pass holders will have a sign up coming soon. Reservations only, like you'll have to make a reservation to go into the Tribute Store, but I think that'll happen. We'll find out. So as we're heading out, I'm inside the Universal Orlando app in the mobile order section for Voodoo Donuts. And this right here is what we want, a mobile app exclusive, a yeast shell donut dipped in vanilla icing with a cinnamon coconut whipped filling. So I'm gonna order that. This is interesting, it's so cold today, the water taxi service is not running from the hotels. Interesting. All right, it's time to head into Voodoo Donuts and pick up our donut. We've got our donut. I think we're gonna head home and eat it though. So it's much, much later, but we are home now, and now it's time to eat the donut. So this is the mobile app exclusive donut. It is a yeast shell donut dipped in vanilla icing filled with a cinnamon coconut whipped filling. Oh, I like that it's whipped. It kind of just looks like frosting, right? Yeah, I like that. I wonder if they mean that it's made with coconut, like, Whipped cream? Yeah. Like coconut cream? Because it just smells like cinnamon to me. So I'm guessing it's supposed to be like the king cake. It's not like overly cinnamony, and I like that. It kind of has like a like a light cinnamon flavor. Like you don't even get the spice from the cinnamon, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Pretty nice. Okay. And the donut is actually like the donut part is very um, like cakey. Okay. Like it just kind of tastes like a cupcake. Well, that's nice. Yeah. I like it. Okay, this tastes exactly to me. Mm-hmm. Like a cinnamon, uh, not cinnamon. It's really good. Um, I don't get, get to get zero coconut. So there you have it. That was our trip to Universal Orlando. I do wish we'd gotten to see some Velocicoaster updates. Next time. But next time. I'm very excited for Mardi Gras. I am super excited. And I know we talked a little bit about it in the park. We were, we were saying like, what are we most excited for? And I couldn't remember the name of the thing that I was excited for, but I found it on their menu. And again, I'll link this down below so you guys can check out the menu too. But from the Puerto Rico tasting menu, they have something called pernil y mofongo, and it's roasted pork, smashed plantains, and onion mojo. To me, that sounded delicious. That sounds real good. There was also something really, really delicious from the Canadian booth. So one thing that we didn't realize is that it's not just New Orleans Mardi Gras, it's all different flavors from around the world for festival and Mardi Gras and different celebrations around this time. Mm -hmm. So a lot of different international flavors too. They're gonna have like a pork schnitzel slider from Germany. Uh, they're gonna have from France, they're gonna have a poached pear creme brulee crepe. That sounds, sounds pretty, pretty fun. Do you think that's gonna be at the crepe stand? Is that the crepe? No, they said they were having the cre the. They're having a creme brulee, creme brulee. Crepe. yeah, maybe. Yeah. Huh. Um, they're gonna have a, like Cuban sandwiches from Cuba. Oh, I'm excited for a Cuban sandwich. Love a Cuban I, sandwich. Me too, I'm super excited. Um, but I also wanted the beef short rib poutine from the Canada booth. And there's tons of other things I wanna try. But again, we'll link the menus down below so you can check it out. There's so much stuff that looks delicious and they're gonna have lots of vegan and gluten-free options. Yeah, and they're gonna have a tasting lanyard so oh, that you yeah. can save a little bit of money. Yeah, I'm getting one of those for sure. Yeah, we <laughs> did find out last year that the break-even point is on the more expensive items. So there is the chance that you might spend too much money on the lanyard buying cheaper items. Yeah, so you wanna kind of plan it out so you're you're using your lanyard for the more expensive items and buying the less expensive ones like just a la carte, if that makes sense. Right, it took a little bit of like mathing, but we did it last year. Oh, another one that sounds really good from the Belgium menu is Brussels, Brussels frite with roasted garlic veganaise. Ooh. I don't know, there's so many things I wanna try. I cannot wait for sa Saturday, right? Yeah. Saturday. Saturday, Saturday. <laughs> It's gonna be super fun. So look forward to a video from us from Mardi Gras yeah. at Universal. Mm -hmm. We're gonna be trying lots of food for sure. Mm -hmm. You guys know we like food. <laughs> so all in all, a fantastic day. And with that being said, we are off. We'll see you all tomorrow. And, and now it's time, time to pay the price. price.